What's up, everybody? I'm Ryan. I'm John. And uh, we're back with another episode. Kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is uh, the quickest turnaround I think we've ever had. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Um, So far, at least. So, uh, first off, um, we wanted to thank you. uh, Thank everybody for coming over from the other page, uh, subscribing to our channel and everything. Uh, Really means the world to us. Um, We've... Uh, we have been extremely humbled by the comments and the participation that yeah. uh, you guys have had throughout the uh, previous Bob Larson video that we put out. So thank you. Thank you so much. We're glad that you guys get it and uh, understand that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and we're here with some new content for everybody. So New content. New content. <laughs> and so this is crazy. So, you know, <laughs> when you're looking at, when you're looking at uh, Peter Popov and Bob Larson, like, these things are one-offs, you know. We just kind of want to jump at the opportunity since the individual is going to be nearby where we live. And uh, this uh, this new uh, event, uh, this new experience, just kind of plopped down on uh, plopped down on our platter here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we decided to go ahead and take full advantage yeah. of it. Um, so brace yourself. This is going to be the shortest video I think we've ever done, but it's it's pretty short and sweet. Uh, there's not there's not much to it. Um, it does involve uh, a, a well-known preacher by the name of Rod Parsley. Rod Parsley. Rod Parsley. He runs the World Harvest Church. It's a super church based here in central Ohio. Uh, he also has another World Harvest Church in Indiana. If that tells you anything, uh, you know, so Ohio and Indiana, those, mm-hmm. uh, that's his demographic mm-hmm. here. Um, and we've we've never been to a super church. Um, no. If you guys have watched the previous videos, you know that I was raised in the Christian religion. Uh, John was not. No. Um, so we saw that there was a very particular church service that was going to be happening at World Harvest that really caught our attention. It did. And Ryan, why don't you explain to everybody what exactly it was that caught our attention. You'd sent me a, a peculiar text message a week before we decided to go. And and what was in that text message that you sent me? I did. So essentially, um, I was perusing through social media and I saw this sponsored ad from Rob Parsley. And there was a video, 60 second video, like a teaser video. I decided to go ahead and hit play because... Why is the screenshot of a World mm. Trade Center being blown up? Yeah, uh, on this that uh, was just the beginning. So I went ahead and clicked play. An <laughs> ominous voice came up. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out a way to put this video in here. We're gonna put it right here, so you can just just watch this video here. This world has lost. ISIS has now claimed responsibility for today's deadly terror attack. War, racial tension. It was a weekend of street battles and stark displays of racism, exploding into a deadly act of domestic terror. Political divide. This broken world is begging for an end. It's a fresh act of madness in America. Moral extinction. Murder. Investigators in Colorado believe they found the bodies of a pregnant mother and her two young daughters, allegedly murdered by their father. Countless dead line our streets as the blood of the guilty and the innocent flow. Breaking news, at least two snipers opening fire in downtown Dallas during a rally. Is this the end? Is Jesus really coming back? Find out February 17th. Get the answers now.com. So, so that's, so yeah. that's what I saw. Did you guys catch that ominous voice? Um, yeah. Did you see how bizarre this video was? Mm-hmm. So you're seeing militaries marching. You're seeing stuff blowing up. You're seeing um, Mickey Mouse and yeah, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants, but like scary. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the whole uh, racial tension. Racial that was tension. a big one. Terrorism. Um, all this stuff. Oh, and man. so watch this video on that. Uh, the thing that stuck out to me is that Rod Parsley said that he knows when Jesus Christ is coming back. Yeah. So if you're familiar at all with the book of Revelation, uh, I am very familiar with it. Um, the book of Revelation is the last book of the Bible, which is pretty much the outlier to what is going to happen to bring about the end times. You hear about yeah. the end times all the time. The bad, wicked things that are going to happen, the Antichrist... All the cool shit in the Bible is in the book of Revelation. That's where all the cool shit is, because it's all this prophecy. And what does it say about Jesus coming back, Ryan? So the Bible specifically says, and this is, I mean, this is this has been uh, 
taught to me over and over and over again. It is specifically what the Bible says. No one knows when Jesus is going to come back. No one. Now, I will preface this by saying this. If you're not familiar with the book of Revelations, to summarize, there's a point in the Bible where they pretty much say, hey, at one point while you're living, Jesus is going to come back to earth and take all of the Christians away from earth. So all of the Christians are going to disappear, leaving all of the non-believers on earth still for seven years. Um, so that's essentially, it's called the rapture. So Jesus takes everybody in the rapture, um, and that's what all the Christians look forward to. There's a beautiful like, movie on Netflix oh, that man. I watched the other day called Left Behind with Nick Cage. Yeah, and uh, clip, clip. Yeah. People from all over this plane have simply vanished. Chris, let me in! Chris! And that's that's the rapture. That's the rapture. So, so Rod Parsley's essentially saying, "Hey, I know when it's going to happen." And so that got my my, my brain thinking. Yeah, oh, I want to. If this guy knows when this is going to happen, yeah, oh, I want to know when this is going to happen because that's super interesting to me. Yeah, and the post apocalyptic video that uh, you just watched, just. Yeah, if you watched that and the church was like literally 40, you know, 40 minutes away, you would have gone too. Uh, why not? Um, so that's what we did. Yeah. We ended up going to this uh, church service. We did. And it, I mean, it sealed the deal for us. I mean, he sent me this video. He's like, did you watch it? Did you watch it? I'm like, no, no. He's like, watch the video. So I watched the video. I'm like, oh my God. He's like, dude, we're going. He's like, this is, this is in a week. We're going. And I'm like, okay, well, let's go. You know, I was, I was intrigued because, uh, wow, what a great scare tactic to get people to come to your church, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, I watched it and I felt yeah. uncomfortable. So the, uh, the other big one though, was the, uh, he claimed to know when Jesus was coming. And look, if someone's going to make a claim that they know when Jesus is coming, well, that's worth mine and Ryan's time to go check out. Oh, absolutely. Especially if it's in our backyard. So. Absolutely. So it was going to be my first time at a super church. And it was uh, my, be, yeah, uh, my uh, first time too. So we, uh, we decided to go. We did. Got we up super did. early on uh, Sunday morning, yeah. uh, hit the road. And we got there a little early because we had heard some, you know, talk about traffic. And so we wanted to get in there. We wanted to get out as yeah. soon as possible. We didn't want to deal with anything else. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll preface this video with this statement. It was essentially a normal church service, guys. If you guys had ever been to a church service. Well, well, yeah, well the outline, for a Presbyterian church. The, the outline for the most part was, you know, the, you had the worship, you had everything, yeah, um, yeah. but we'll walk you through each bit that, uh, that, that we experienced. You know, yeah. we, we were greeted at the door. Everyone was very kind. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. someone personally escorted us to the restroom, they did. which was a uh, very kind because yeah. the place is huge. We didn't know where it was. Um, the bathrooms were nice. I do yeah. want to make that. They were large. Right. Yeah. Um, we yeah. did make a bet. I actually had a bet that they were going to have monitors, uh, <laughs> yeah. at the service. So yeah. if you were uh, taking a piss in the urinal that you'd still be able to watch it, but it actually wasn't that fancy. No, it was, it was, it was a nice restroom, but it, yeah. it wasn't super fancy. No audio or anything. No, no we thought there'd be something in there, but and nothing, nothing like that, which is okay. There's sure. nothing wrong with that. The main room was just huge. Yeah. Um, it was like uh, an hundreds, auditorium. Hundreds of people. Uh, top of the line cameras for live streaming. They do a lot of streaming on the internet. They I don't know if they do television streaming anymore, but they had they had the equipment. To oh do yeah. All of that so I think we counted. There were seven cameras. They were all like studio quality cameras. Mobile. Like yeah. A big set. Yeah. I mean, they were. There were uh, what? There were two. There were two stationary cameras in the front, and then two boom cameras in the front for getting more dramatic effects. Then there were two boom cameras in the back and another stationary camera in the back. I mean, this was like real deal. So like what you would see on TV, that's what this place was. Yeah. Um, so we get, we get sat down. We're greeted by multiple people. Someone, someone shows us to our seats. They, they, we kept being asked if we wanted to sit closer. We're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're right. We're not really, right, 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 right. if we want to get the heck out of here, we don't <laughs> want to make, we want to make as least of a stink as we possibly can. Um, this woman approached us. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, the she nice been going to the church for 25 odd years or she something was like all that. In, yeah. She was a, uh, 
uh, one of the she she was a worker. She was like the uh, executive marketing. Yeah, she was she was she was an like employee that. of the church. She yeah. asked us how we heard about it. Said social media. Um, one thing that I thought was really funny. Um, if anyone does any uh, uh, backstory history on Rod Parsley, uh, the guy's kind of a lunatic. He's <laughs> he's definitely a bit of an extremist. He's, yeah. He's, you know, your typical anti-abortion. He's definitely got his views on gay marriage. He he hates it, uh, hint, hint. Uh, so, <laughs> marriage is uh, is protected by uh, religion. Yes, it's, yes. Uh, it's, don't want to destroy the sanctity. No, of, no, of, can't, of can't marriage. do that. Because that's do really that. what Jesus cares about is who you sleep with. This woman made, uh, you know, she actually brought this up. Now, again, we're newcomers to this church. And one of the things that she says directly to us is, now about our our pastor Rod, mm, he's he's got his views, but yeah. as you can see, we're all inclusive. She's 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 alluding to the, the demographic was very large. You mm -hmm. know, the there there were there were uh, Hispanics. Um, you know, there were African Americans. Uh, it was very split. Uh, it, it was it yeah. was very it was very diverse. It yeah. was a very diverse crowd. Yep, and. Um, it hit me because she was kind of speaking slightly negative about Rod in, in a sense because she brought up like, oh, Rod, he has like he has his views. Yeah, she was like, but we want you to yeah. feel welcome yeah. because look at everybody around here. We include everyone. And when she – so she, she gave us a gift bag. Uh, I'll show you that here in a second. She gave us both gift bags for being newcomers and left. And I, I reached over to John and I'm like, dude. They think that we're a gay couple coming in here, <laughs> which, I mean, it would make sense. If I was a regular at this church and I saw two fully grown men walk in and, and sit down together on a Sunday morning. Kind of in the back, not yeah. wanting to move up, you yeah. know. So uh, she knew his thoughts, like Ron yeah. Parsley's views on that. So I just kind of thought that was funny, how she was defending, yeah. she, was, she was kind of defending him out the gate. She was, um, but she was also preparing saying... Preparing us. Like, yeah. oh, we're all inclusive despite what Rod thinks. Right, so right, think right. And fine. I think one thing that was big for me is she went out of her way to say, look around. I'm sure you can tell we're a diverse group. It was like she... It's okay to be prideful of that because you should. You should be prideful of diversity. Absolutely. But she went out of her way to make sure we knew that even though we already could tell from our own eyes and looking around but it was very important for her to tell us that that we know that this place has diversity after she just told us he was a by the book old school you know set in his ways type preacher so it was very contradictory yeah but yet she still wanted us to be welcome and like ryan said we're both convinced she thought we were gay which is hilarious yeah and and and, and that's fine but other other than her everyone else pretty much left us alone um we yeah. had some ushers come through um shook our hands everyone was very kind yeah uh we had people sitting around us everybody said hi yep. uh yep. Kind of goes back to it. Felt like a typical church service yeah. to me, especially when everyone's coming in. Yeah. Um. So church starts. The music comes out. Music production was insane. The curtain uh, goes up. Yeah. Curtain rises, and then everyone's super, you know, dressed up. Uh. The the lead music pastor had on his leather jacket with his jeans and graphic t shirt. Now did trying he, to look hip with the kids. He kind of had an Adam Lambert vibe. Uh, yeah, did, did, absolutely. Did, did yeah. Yeah. Bit? Absolutely. But definitely rock star. I think yep. he had a little bit of eyeliner going on. Eyeliner, dude. His, yeah, he had. This was his moment every Sunday morning <laughs> and Wednesday night. Like this is his time to shine. Yeah, yeah. And everyone was super talented. Oh yeah. The harmonies were great. The um, choir was there. They had a band playing. They had dancers. They had backup yeah, vocals. It like was it was. Fun. It, it was, was a production. Fun. Everyone was up dancing around. And that whole part of the service, I can honestly say, it went pretty quick. The songs were like six oh. to ten minutes long, and each. they were the same the 10 same. words repeated hallelujah, over and over and over. Hallelujah. Let's gonna, we're going to slow down the temple and say hallelujah softly. Yeah. And then we're going to get faster. Right. And then we're going to sing. Right. And then everyone goes, hey, right. shit, hallelujah. But it was... Yeah. It was but it was just really well done. I mean, it, like if, if 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 you enjoy music, I mean, John, you were dancing. I, 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 I mean, was up into moving. it. I mean, I wasn't I like was, dancing, I was, but I was, I was, I was like, you know, feeling it. You know, my, uh, my foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a beat. We were feeling the beat. Yeah, you know? it was good. We were participating. Yeah, it was. It was. It was cool. We were. We were right in there. Um. So mm -hmm. music stops. Associate pastor comes up to kind of tell uh, everybody. 
um, give updates on some things. Uh, one of the updates was the yeah. most recent protest at a woman's clinic. And they were really <laughs> proud about this. Really I mean, happy. Was, that was a big deal for them. Talked about it for a while. Um, and it was, it was, yeah, there were no claps from John or I when no, they were, no, no. Uh, when they were going through these things. Cause it's really tough to see, um, like, in the pictures that we saw, would you say about 30, 40, 50 people at this event that yeah, they had? Yeah. They had an event outside of a women's clinic here in Columbus, and there were a ton of these people, and they were um, ecstatic about talking women out of having abortions. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as they know, they could have just scared the women who were going in, sure. like made them feel like piles of shit. And then they said what they needed to say to get them off their back and then left and then came back maybe an hour later. Now, they uh, also – remember the update that they had too? There was something – I wish I would have wrote this down. I took like 30 pages of notes. I didn't write this down though. But there was a mathematical number, a figure that they had of like how many – How many souls that they said? Was it souls or souls. babies? Souls. Yeah. They said souls. So basically they were just saying, hey, this is how many people we convinced not to make their own decision that they constitutionally have. Right. I was definitely put off, but, you know, Ryan and I kept looking at each other and we realized that we're in the lion's den. This is where we're at. This is what we're going to hear. So we just need to keep moving on. But, you know, we weren't in character or anything. We went as ourselves. We, we, we didn't really have to talk to anybody or tell anybody what we were doing there, but there, there was no, like, we weren't trying to infiltrate like we have on some of our other ones. We were just ourselves. So yeah. our reactions we had were our normal John and Ryan reactions. There was no play up or downplay of that. We were upset. And this isn't anything new. You know, you're going to go to a church yeah, service, and yeah. this is something you're going to find pretty regularly. Uh, it's just, it's 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 uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uncomfortable when you hold a completely polar opposite viewpoint of these these people. You know, I, I look at what they do is, you know, uh, mentally abusive, but uh, they look at it as they're saving lives. Yeah. So you yeah. have that you have that disconnect. I mean, that is that is what it is. I I I don't agree with what they do. I feel like that tactic is is yeah. is not appropriate. Um, but uh, they see it completely different. They look at it as like they're literally saving children from fire and from death. Mm -hmm. I, so we're not even, we're not getting into that. It was just an uncomfortable moment. They were very prideful on that. So it's it's just a very it was just a, a weird moment. Um, so the, the guy gets done speaking. Then he, well, no, he he's uh, opening it up to uh, the offering. So um, yeah. like, just like just like a typical church, uh, they're going to open the offering, and he had some words to say about he, that. He, he had a story yep. to tell to make sure you felt really okay with the offering you were about to give. Yeah, and the story essentially goes like this, and this is, I mean, this is essentially a, a biblical proverb for the most sense. You have three individuals, two super rich people and one poor woman. And the two super rich people give thousands of pieces of gold to the church, and it doesn't even phase them because they're so rich. But they give so much money. But then the uh, the poor woman, who I think is alluded to be a prostitute or something in the Bible, didn't, didn't even have had, like a pot to piss in. Like, had just nothing. nothing. And nothing. she gave like she gave one, one shilling, one or shilling, something. Yeah. whatever. She gives her one piece of something that she couldn't even afford to do, and that one shilling was worth more than the two rich men what they gave combined. Um, in God's eyes. Well, he also so, said, remember, I don't want to interrupt you, but no, remember fine. he also said that uh, Jesus, he used Jesus because he said Jesus was a part of this particular service. He was telling the, the story of the proverb from, and when that woman gave something she didn't have, Jesus took note of that. And, and, and Jesus gave her attention. And Jesus is the one that told her, you know, these rich people can afford it. This, this, this means nothing, but what you've given because you couldn't even afford it, you're going to get so much in return because you gave something you couldn't afford. These rich people, they can afford it. They, it's no big deal. But you, the woman who had nothing that gave something, that's the special tithing. That's the one 10%. that's going to get you something. And then he went into that and he said, and by the way, you know, it does say in the Bible you should give 10%. So yeah. right there, Ryan and I are like, there's the money. Right. right. And, and that's and that's going to be something that's common that you see. Yep. You go to sure. Church. That's the same thing. That but I was specifically in the Bible. Popov takes that oh, and yeah. expands it like crazy. You know who Popov is? Popov is Merv from... Home Alone 2, when he wraps tape around his hand and he sticks it in the <laughs> jar as the sticky bandit. That's who Peter Popoff is, is, dude. He is. He's the he sticky is. bandit. Is. That is him, is. dude. That is, is him. It is. 
Um, so they pass around the offering. That was kind of a mind fuck because there was yeah. no organization. Oh. It was insane. Buckets going around oh. everywhere. We felt uncomfortable because we, we didn't get anything. We, we, we had buckets yeah, being, just we were just like passing them. John there was sitting <laughs> next to a kid who threw something <laughs> and he hands it to John that I have a bucket passing. It was just a yeah, mess. Yeah, it was. It was a mess, but we hand both of our buckets to the, the usher man. Yeah. Um, but that was over, that was over, uh, rather quick. They were singing a song. That song continued. Um, and then the lights go down. Oh yeah. Yeah. The lights go down. And that video that I just showed you earlier, uh, starts playing in the background. I am <laughs> so stoked. Yeah. I'm the we're, biggest we're, we're like, like, yes, oh, here man, it comes. It's time. It's yep. time. So we're, I mean, I can't believe that they played that video yeah. in church. Um, it's so scary. It I was mean, deafening such... too. Like nobody was talking, right? Oh, like yeah. everybody oh, yeah. was all into it. Like, right. they, oh man, you can tell. Like, and then, and then Rod Parsley comes, comes up out and like the lights come on and he's at the pulpit, like right there, ready to go. So he, he, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff that he went over and honestly, I feel like it would be a disservice to our viewers to go through every mute detail. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, we can paraphrase. He, I mean, he, he, he talked about a lot of stuff. There's a comparison. Like, he was saying, like, people think that Barney is the Antichrist, and he threw up a formula on the... He threw up a formula for Barney the Dinosaur. Well, it was... Uh, that it was, like, 666. Yeah, it, it was... It was really that Barney the Dinosaur, uh, and then the, uh, the, the, the monster... Thing. Remember how those YouTube videos were out there of people doing those weird algorithms with like Monster and the logo and Barney and like connecting dots and imagery and, and numbers and, and then you get 666 at the end. So yeah. Monster's the devil, you yeah. know, Barney's the devil. But he refuted that. He was like, this is bullshit. Right, right, right. Um, th those were the kinds of things that he was saying. He... He uh, he did a uh, he did a Cardi B um, impersonation, oh, which God. was very strange. It got a lot of laughs. Um, yeah, not from us. <laughs> um, it was well, we might have laughed at him for the wrong reason. Um, but so, and he keeps alluding to. Just wait, I'm going to tell you when Jesus yeah. is coming. Every, Throughout the whole thing, every five whole minutes, whole it was thing. a teaser. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know why you're here. I'm going to get to it. I know why you're here. But let me tell you about this. And you know, this is a this is a Pentecostal. Sorry mega church right so it's just nothing but fear mongering and yes. guilt tripping and scare tactics to get you to accept jesus and get right with god and join rod parsley because this is the only way for you to be saved and if you don't do this all these horrible things are going to happen to you i don't think he preached about love happiness relationships you know, bunnies, anything nice or happy once, it was all negative, <laughs> negative, 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 terrible, terrible, terrible. And I'm just, we felt beat up by the end. We're just like emotionally drained. Now that, I mean, there was one point where he was talking about the tribulation. Now, the tribulation is the seven years, you know, the lucky number seven. You know? Yeah. So the seven years... After the Christians have been taken away in the rapture, that's when everybody else is left to. There's, there's two men, two preachers essentially, oh, who are left this. behind. And essentially, it's going to happen in the Middle East. But just to paraphrase, yeah. what's going to happen is these men will be shot dead and left in the streets for like two weeks, and there will be worms crawling all over and their bodies. And CNN, he said, CNN, CNN is will be, be filming, filming them. Yes. Everyone's going to be filming these yes. dead bodies. No one's going to yes. give a shit. And then, after a period of time, there's going to be this light, and this uh, <laughs> these stallions will descend from the heavens, <laughs> and these men will rise up, and there will be tanks yes. and giant helicopters circling. He like, said, "Apache." Oh, Armies, yeah, Apaches. Apaches. and armies of yeah. uh, of men yeah. surrounding these dead men who rise. Yeah. And then my favorite part oh, is yeah, yeah, yeah. a sword will come out of their mouth. Yes. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he's gonna, gonna have the swords, they'll be lit on fire, they're going to mount the stallions yes. and ascend to heaven, and then that'll be the end. Well, then didn't you say the, the swords were gonna break the Mount Olive in half oh, and then oh, yeah, the water is gonna come up through it? There's because water, that was in the Bible. There's water under Mount Olive. Yeah, there's a and whole he, like lake under there. And or yeah, something. he's talked with like a Christian seismologist. Who's yes. like, there's a lot of activity right. in the water. I have these Mount topography Olive. maps. Look at these. I'm not fucking kidding you. I felt like I was in the middle of Final <laughs> Fantasy 16. Yes. Like, yes. oh, my people, travel to Mount Olive. You'll find the Apache helicopter <laughs> there, and then you will use the sword to break the rocks. Your Mount final Olive limit to break free, will to break free, the mountain to open. To free the waters yes, under yes. the the floor. Flowing yes. water under Mount Olive. Yeah. Um. So that's essentially the end. And then he says, 
So I know you've been waiting this whole time. Now, mind you, it's been two oh, fucking hours. Oh, my God. He's like, you've been waiting this whole time for me to tell you this day. Like, just imagine when that for coming. a second, though. Just two hours yes. of, of just being beat up emotionally with nothing but negativity. War like, and racism. Oh, my God. And like, all this Both stuff. Ryan and I, we, we just kept, like, looking at each other. And, like, we'd, we'd kind of whisper. But, you know, we're, we don't want people to hear us talking to each other. You know, again, we don't want to disrupt people. But we were just both like, man, I'm ready to leave. Like, I just, I just felt so emotionally drained and beat up the whole time. Yeah. Oh. So, so it comes down to this. He says, oh. I'm going to tell you when it's going to happen. Yeah, here we go. Brace yourselves. We're about to find out when Jesus is coming back. Pro- we prop ourselves up in our seat. I've, I know that I've got Yeah, we're like on the edge. We're like ready. Like, like let's hear it. Let's hear it. I want to hear a date. Yes. <laughs> you look so serious right there. And then he's, he says... He like looks. He's not even looking at the congregation. He's looking at the fucking yeah, camera. Didn't he have like his he's, hand up and he was looking, like, he's like looking, looking at the camera? Yeah, he's like he's looking straight into the camera. And I'm gonna tell you right now. Yeah, when Jesus is coming, is coming back. back. Like it was and like his it was response, weird. Yeah, it, his, his and his, his the response. <laughs> he says, <laughs> "No one knows. No one knows." That was it. No, well then, like, he, so after he said it. that, after he said that, <laughs> then he goes, so the answer you're looking for is when you least expect it. When you least expect it. That's why it could be when you walk out, he kept saying, when you walk out of this room, it could happen. And are you ready? Are, are you right with God? Are you the right kind of Christian? Are you with Jesus now? Because if you're not, if you're not, then you're not ready. And if he comes when you leave this room, you're not going. So come on down to the stage and get saved and join my church. So that way, if he comes in the parking lot, you're ready. Because he's coming when you least expect it. And so he makes everybody stand up. And so I'm like, okay, thank goodness. Like We're going gonna, gonna to stand up. They're going to pray, sing another song. He's going to invite people to be saved up to the front. We can get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But no, we stand up. And I, I just want to talk about this story real quick because I think it's absolute horseshit. I, I, I do think this is kind of horseshit. There might be a little bit of truth to it, but I still think it's horseshit. He's like, I'm going to leave you with this. I have a story for you. I knew this guy. He sat right here oh, in the seat. Man. He wore overalls. Yeah. Overalls. And he talked like this. His name was Billy. And Big Billy or Big whatever. Billy, yeah, Big like, Bill or whatever it was. Because he was uh, a big guy. Yeah. And uh, basically, he wasn't sure about becoming a Christian, but then one day he decided to become a Christian. He left the church service one day, and a kid had an epileptic seizure on the highway and ran headfirst into his car, and they Bill died. died. He tells another story, and it's like, oh, well, in Big Bill's way, <laughs> another one of his friends came by, and he came big to Tom, see me. Big Tom, yeah, was big, it Tom. Was like, big Tom. Big Tom. Big Tom. He came in, and then he's like, oh, let me break, like, Rod Parsons, he's like, oh, Big Tom, let me talk to you about yeah. God. I want you to come to God. And apparently, like Big Tom was so freaked out by Rob Parsley, he got the fuck out of there and ran out yeah, of the yeah. building. Maybe that happened. I don't know. But then Big Tom leaves the building, gets into his big semi truck, and drives straight into a concrete wall after hitting black ice. And basically, he's like, "Bob, you know the the first guy. He, he went to Billy went to heaven because he accepted Christ. Mm-hmm, big mm-hmm. Tom, he went to hell. I know he did because he yeah. didn't accept Christ and he died right after he talked to me. He and he dead. went into great detail, great detail to describe how Big Tom suffered and burned alive yeah. in that yeah. car accident. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone <laughs> in that auditorium went, oh, there's a little gap. The bottom line was, no one knows when Jesus is going to come. It's going to happen when you least expect it. You guys could leave the service today and you could die. Yep. He's not wrong. He's yeah, not wrong. Sure, Everyone sure, dies. Sure. It could happen at any time. But the fear tactics that he used, you saw the video, and then you saw his answer. He doesn't really know. He no. just used that to get people. He, it was a scare tactic to get everyone in. And then that whole service was, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Join my church. Accept Jesus or you will burn in hell. And yep. he described hell so many yep. different ways, yep. uh, making it uh, its a terrible, terrible place, you know, yada, 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 all that stuff. Um, so they start praying, and I'm like, John, this is the time to go. Day. It's time to leave. So we left our seats while everybody had their heads bowed and eyes closed, while people were walking quickly up to the front <laughs> crying 
uh, and like ready to get saved and, and join, we're and, and we're and going the opposite direction. Like, we we need to get out people. Of, we got to get out of here, <laughs> uh, and so we we exit, and that was it. Yeah, um, but it was yeah, it was just a it was an interesting thing. I'd never been to a super church. Nope, I can first time. I can say that super churches have a lot of money. Super churches oh, yeah. are very aggressive. Oh, Rob yeah. Parsons kind of a dick bag. Yeah, um, and is. scare tactics really do work to convert you into a religion. Mm-hmm. Scare yeah. tactics definitely, definitely worked. Going into it, I mean, it, it, it just feeling emotion and hearing what he had to say. It, 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 it I mean, it's frightening yeah. because you never know when you're going to die. Sure, but it's nice because I'm cool when my time comes. I yeah, feel I mean, fucking fine. I'm it. not. I'm not living my life for something to happen later that may or may not happen. I'm just living it every day as it is and enjoying it the best that I possibly can. That's why I keep taking work off. Shut up. So, <laughs> anyways, yes, yes, right, yeah, exactly. So, um, now here's one thing that I didn't get out of it uh, that I was actually looking forward to. Um, now I wasn't raised in religion. I like one of my best friends growing up was a Methodist, so I went to church with him a lot in my early teenage years, like twelve to like fifteen, maybe sixteen. But it was mostly like the youth group meetings. I went to like maybe half a dozen or a dozen actual like services, but that was really my whole lifetime exposure. Going into this, I was looking forward to getting a Bible lesson. I wanted to learn more about things in the Bible that Rod Parsley thought were important to teach me. And I didn't learn shit about the Bible because the only thing he taught us was what we already knew before we went in there, which is you don't know when Jesus is coming back. Yet he said he knew when Jesus is coming back. And then we, after two hours of getting beat up with negativity, we get to the answer and the answer is when you least expect it. Well, that's already what the Bible is. You're just saying the, literally saying the exact same thing, just using different words. So all he did was make a video to freak people out, to get them to come to his church so he could tell them something that he already knew, just so they would give him money and join his church. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the kind of guy Rod Parsley and the World Harvest Church is. Yep. So that's our, that's our latest experience. Please feel free to leave comments if there's anything that you guys can think of that you think that we should go check out. Uh, where we read every comment. We reply whatever we can. Um the discussions have been excellent. Uh, if you want to discuss anything, if and I, you're, if you're, hold on, hold on. Let me cut you off real quick. I want to apologize to the guy in the comments that he and I might have been going back and forth a little bit. You know, <laughs> we're both we're both passionate guys. So look, man, no hard feelings. I appreciate the conversation we had. Just wanted to say that. Do you remember his name? Uh, Danny, I think is his name. Danny, I don't remember. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, so you know, no hard feelings, guy. Thanks for the good conversation. We do appreciate it. Yeah, feel free, subscribe, share the video, anything like that, uh, and please leave feedback, leave uh, leave other things for us to do, anything that you can think yeah. of that you want to see, because um, we want to do this stuff so you don't have to. Yep, we do it so you don't have to, and there's gonna be more. Cool. Well, hey, I'm Ryan. I'm John. You guys have a great night.